So I ended up actually buying these to try them out after seeing them sold at a couple of different retailers. This is what they're calling Tiki Tunes Pro made by Limitless. These are Bluetooth wireless speakers made to look like a Tiki torch of sorts. So not only do you get ambient lighting to set the mood, but you also have music to back that up. And this was actually a package deal, some kind of a 4th of July sale where you got two for the price of one. And I've got two here on camera and then an additional two you being used elsewhere currently. So I have a total of four of these things. And what makes these very special, even though a number of Bluetooth speakers these days have this technology, although it's new for me, is what they're calling party sync mode. And that allows you to pair up up to what they're claiming is a hundred speakers for true surround sound wireless music playback. Powerful 10 watt speaker, 12 hour playtime, realistic LED flame light, and these are relatively water resistant since you're probably gonna be using these things outdoors. This has a transmission distance of 50 feet and also charges over USB type C. And here they go on to elaborate about their party sync technology. Connect up to 100 speakers for an elevated listening experience filled with a rich melody of bass and high, high tones projected in every direction using the 360 degree design. And they are claiming that uh, this is IPX6 rated and of course obligatory Prop 65 warning notwithstanding. And as part of this package deal, in addition to getting these speakers, I also ended up with these pole ground stake things that you stick in the ground and you piece these sections together. They just slide into one another from 8 to 40 inches tall and then it uses a standard, almost looks like a tripod mount for a camera to mount the speakers to. You can put those wherever you want in your backyard, front yard or anywhere in between, just stick it in the ground. So in the box you obviously get the Tiki Tune speaker some kind of a warranty card or something for customer service, a USB-C charging cable, and a quick start instruction manual guide. And the recharging time claims to be about five to six hours from zero percent, and a play time of up to 12 hours, but of course that depends on the volume at which you're playing your music and the light brightness. And so here is the speaker. Again, I have not one but actually four. I only have two right now currently. The other two are elsewhere. <laughs> but uh, this is what they look like. So you've got a little hook on the top to hang this thing up. On the bottom they do give you that quarter inch uh, threaded uh, mount to connect this to the ground stakes. On the top are controls for the flame, the checking the battery level, adjusting the volume and skipping songs back and forward playing and pausing, Bluetooth and the power button. And then the speaker grill is actually on the bottom. And if you look through this metal mesh, you can see cutouts for the speaker. And I'm assuming that the speaker is in here and it's a downward firing speaker that uh, they just, you put these cutouts so that way it's uh, a very omnidirectional sound <clears throat> that isn't uh, isn't going to be focused in one direction or the other. And behind this rubber flap is the USB-C charging port. Almost looks like there would have been room at one point or another for an aux input uh, behind this little door, but uh, you don't get that on this model. So I'm wondering if maybe there was a past version of the speakers that actually had an aux input or something else that was alongside the USB-C charging input. Now there's three different settings that you can use for the flame mode on here which you can cycle through by pressing the flame button. One is the conventional flicker flame effect. The second one is a gradual increase and decrease in brightness. A breathing effect if you will. And then the last one is just a solid brightness. Now of course the rest of the controls are also on the top. So you've got the button for controlling the flame settings, checking the battery level, turning it on and off, skipping ahead and skipping backward through songs and adjusting the volume, playback and pause, and the Bluetooth button. And after turning it on now, it's showing up under Bluetooth devices as Tiki Tunes Pro. 
So I'll just connect to that. And there we go. We are connected now to the first speaker. Now let's say you're playing music on one speaker and you have a few more you want to add around the house for surround sound. What they want you to do is go to the first speaker, press the Bluetooth button. Party sync mode. And you'll hear that voice prompt saying that party sync mode is on. And then you'll make sure that your other Tiki Tune torch is on. In this case it is. You'll press the Bluetooth button on the second one that you want party to pair to the first mode. one. And then after it, you hear the party sync prompt, you press and hold the Bluetooth button. Then you'll hear that chime. And eventually you'll hear that noise once it's connected. And so now both of these are synced. Anything we play on the, what they're referring to as the parent will play on the child devices. And you can see which is the parent because the controls up top will actually flash every now and again in blue, whereas the child devices will stay solidly lit. So that's an easy way to tell which is the master and which are the slave devices. Now these things can get extremely loud. If I turn the volume up even halfway, it's almost unbearably loud. And uh, I guess we're getting ready to have a power outage because the lights are flickering on and off. I'll play this. That's what the volume turned all the way down. Needless to say, that's excessively loud. <laughs> I hate to hear what would happen if you turn the volume all the way up, but it's not distorting, so that's impressive. Now, one thing that is a bit of an inconvenience is that any of the slave or child devices cannot be used to control media playback or volume. So if you have a child device that's connected to the parent somewhere, but this uh, child is within easy you know, arm's reach, uh, you can't just easily pause the playback or adjust the volume. It doesn't do anything. You have to go over to the parent device and control everything from that one. So just press play. I have noticed that every now and again there is a slight delay between the devices that are synced up using party sync mode and that causes a sort of out of phase type pseudo stereo effect like records from the late 50s and early 60s that were trying to get re-released as stereo and they would just re-channel the sound and create a reverb effect that would cause the listener to think it's stereo. Something that is rather disappointing but probably beyond the capabilities of uh, Bluetooth right now is that you can't stream left and right stereo audio to different speakers. So you can't, for example, put this one over on the left, this one on the right, and have a really prominent stereo effect. Here is a simple left and right test. This is the left channel. This is the right channel. Well, we can actually put that to rest live on camera. If you have a spare tripod sitting around, you can just connect it right up to the bottom of the speaker. It's the exact same screw size and thread pitch. So I have this hooked up right now to a tripod mounting plate, quick release plate, without any issues. So that works just fine. And here's a look at the ground stake stand that you can stick in the ground wherever you want to uh, mount these speakers. And you can actually adjust the height of these things by removing or adding segments. For example, I pull that out. See, you just kind of twist it and they separate. So that's the ground stake that goes in the ground. So the total height with all the segments installed is 40 inches, give or take. You just screw the speaker into the top and you use this thumb screw to tighten it up and secure it. And you can put these things wherever you want. Just be careful because, like uh, in my case with this one, the uh, plastic collar that you're supposed to use to help seat it in the ground actually cracked off. So the plastic is rather brittle. I'm rather behind the times when it comes to smartphones and things like that. This is actually an iPhone 7 that I'm still using to this day and it works flawlessly with uh, these Bluetooth speakers but what I actually noticed because uh, there's times where I want to play music have a dedicated device doing that so my phone is not held hostage and I could still use it for YouTube and other things like that while playing music in the background 
is I actually dug out of storage a very old iPhone 4S. I don't think this phone is uh, new enough to work correctly with these speakers because if I turn this on, Tiki Tunes Pro, you click that, and it just sits there showing the pinwheel, but it never actually connects. I've tried this with all the speakers I have, and nothing happens, so I guess this phone's Bluetooth uh, version is just too old to pair up with these, and I suspect it's got something to do with these having that party sync mode. It's just a little too modern of a feature for this phone to uh, successfully work with. That would have been the perfect purpose for an old iPhone 4S such as this one, is I could just play Pandora or YouTube Music. Now something I also discovered is that if you want to turn all of your paired devices off at once, instead of going to each device and turning it off, just go to the parent, press the power button, and they both turn off, or however many you have synced up. Download the Domino's app today and become a piece of the Pi Rewards member to earn points toward free pizza. Audio quality is rather astounding from Bluetooth speakers that are primarily supposed to be uh, for decoration. So believe it or not, these speakers don't just look good, they also sound good. Bass response is more than acceptable, especially when you turn up the volume reasonably loud. And the treble is nice and clear and crisp. And unlike a lot of other Bluetooth speakers, the mid-range isn't excessively pronounced. It's a very nice, well-rounded, well-balanced sound to these. And believe me, if you want to turn these things up and get the party rocking, you certainly can. And so that'll conclude my review of the Tiki Tunes Pro Bluetooth speaker and flame lights. And I just noticed that they're calling these the Tiki Tunes Pro, which seems to insinuate that perhaps there was a non-pro version that preceded these. So really not bad. I didn't hold very high hopes that the sound quality on these things would be acceptable, but I have to say I'm pleasantly surprised.